Trigonometry, Chapter 5, Trigonometric Identities, Section 2, Verifying Trigonometric Identities, Video 8, Verifying an Identity, Example 7. The series is based on content from Pearson's Trigonometry 12th edition by Lyle, Hornsby, Schneider, and Daniels. Again, in this series, we're not connecting the videos. We're just verifying identities, showing examples. Maybe. All right, let's verify the identity. Sine squared of alpha secant squared of alpha plus sine squared of alpha cosecant squared of alpha equals sequence equals secant squared of alpha. Needless to say, we're going to start with the left side and hopefully collapse it down to the right side. I have continued uh, setting these up in a PDF where I can write everything out a little bit better and keep it a little bit more organized. So here's the identity that we're trying to verify. Let's start with the left side and see if we can find some sort of move that we can do. Now, remember, when you're manipulating a trigonometric expression, you have two options. Option number one is a trigonometric move. Option number two is an algebraic move. Which one do you think we should do here? Well, let me think about this for a second. There's a lot of squared trig functions, but there's too many of them glued together to easily use the Pythagorean identity. If we were to turn into sines and cosines, the secant squared would become 1 over cosine squared. The cosecant squared would become 1 over sine squared. I think that's a good move. Because what I was also thinking is let's factor out the sine squared. But let's go ahead and use a reciprocal identity. In other words, let's start by using um, trigonometry. We may eventually at some point use a factoring move. Because one thing that jumped out about me about the left side of this is there's a common factor of sine squared. Okay, so let's start with the left side and manipulate it. Um, you know, I, there's a secant squared on the on on the first term right here, and I could turn it into one over cosine squared, but I'm looking at my destination that has a secant squared, so I think it might be a good idea to leave that secant squared alone just for the just in the meantime. Maybe we don't need to. Maybe we maybe we need to change it. But because my destination has a secant squared in it, I'm going to leave it alone for now. But I am going to change the one, the cosecant squared to 1 over sine squared. That is a reciprocal identity. Oh, and what happens as a consequence of that? As a consequence of that, the sine squareds cancel. And now we're left with... Hmm. Okay, so I'm regretting my decision of not changing the secant squared. So let's go ahead and let's leave it alone just for a second. Actually, I'm okay with it. So from here to here was just algebra. We cancel the sine squareds. Um, no, that didn't was okay. What I thought I was going to do is factor a sine squared out of this, but I killed all the sine squareds, so no more factoring will suffice. So let's go ahead and turn the secant squared into one over cosine squared. I thought I saw something that would algebraically benefit us by not changing the secant squared. Obviously, that wasn't the case. So let's go ahead and use a reciprocal identity to change secant squared into 1 over cosine squared. Now, here's a, a spot where we can be efficient. We could do an algebra move and multiply those into one fraction, but it's going to become sine squared over cosine squared. But what is sine over cosine? Sine over cosine is tangent. So the destination of that part that I have circled is tangent squared theta because it's an algebra move to merge it into one fraction and then a, then a trigonometry move, a quotient identity, to rewrite it as tangent. If you can see an algebraic move and bypass it pretty smoothly like that one, I would be okay with it. Just don't do something drastic. Oh, wait, tangent squared plus one, that's secant squared. That is a Pythagorean identity. So the secant squared did come back again as a result of a Pythagorean identity. I thought preserving the secant squared at the beginning was a good idea because the right side had a secant squared, but at some point I was forced to change it to cosine, but it got back to secant squared. So I like this one. It had a twist in it that I wasn't expecting, a twist that kind of caught me off guard.